we've received a very warm response to the program that we just began this week of inviting people to uh, sponsor different shiurim uh, and the like that we put on during the week. Uh, we're very grateful to all of the people who have been so generous, and uh, this video message is no exception. Uh, we would like to thank Melanie and Sandy Carlin, who are sponsoring in honor of the births and brissos of their twin grandsons, two born to Dalian and Benji Carlin. They also want to specifically note that one of the grandsons is named after Sandy's father, Halava Shalom, who I and I'm sure many of you remember quite fondly. I want to thank Marsha and Yitz Kasten for their sponsorship. I want to thank Nadine and Menashe Kantz for sponsoring as a schus for Rafur Shlema for all the sick in Israel. We want to thank Harry and Dr. Ron Scheinson for sponsoring in memory of parents Krendel Elka and Dov Bear Krasnow and Chaya Machla and Mordechai Yaakov and Cohen Scheinson. Their Neshamo should have a Leos. And finally, we want to thank Marina and Greg Shmunis for sponsoring in honor of the Young Yisrael Shomer Muna rabbis and all of the Rebbeim who continue their work in teaching Torah remotely. Uh, thank you to all of you for your generosity. It's uh, much appreciated. We have in the second Parsha of this week's Torah reading, we have the famous Parsha Kedoshim that begins with the instruction to the Jewish people, Kedoshim to you. You should be people of sanctity. And it's a very famous question, what does it mean? What is God asking us to do when he instructs us to be people of sanctity? Rashi says what Rashi says, the Ramban says what the Ramban says. What I really like to focus on with you in this message is what the Sforno says. The Sforno says, think about it. God has taken the Jewish people out of Egypt. God has brought the Jewish people to our Sinai to give them the Torah. Uh, God has given the Jewish people instructions for the building of the Mishkan, this remarkable sanctuary in the desert. And then as we move on to the book of Vayikra, God has given the Jewish people instructions about how to serve him properly in the Mishkan. God has given instructions about Tum and Tahara, ritual impurity and purity. God has given instructions about inappropriate sexual relations. God has given instructions about uh, kashras, about what food, what types of uh, creatures may or may not be eaten. So many different rules. And after all of this, HaKadosh Baruch Hu now says, Kedoshim to you. You have a charge to become people of sanctity. And says the Sforno, what does it mean to become people of sanctity? What it means is that when God originally created Adam and Chava, it's very clearly laid out in the Torah what the hope was. God says to the angels, according to Rashi, Let us make man in our likeness. And the idea of that is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is creating humanity and every man and woman on this planet is created B'Tselem Elohim in the likeness of God, which means they have a unique capacity, we have a unique capacity to grow and to reach remarkable heights. And says the Sforno, that's what God is urging us to do in this week's Parsha. God is saying to us, reach great heights, bring to fruition the hopes that God had when he created Adam and Chava in the first place. Become Kedoshim, become sacred people. And you might ask, how are we to become Kedoshim? And the answer is, read the rest of the parsha. The rest of the parsha is about all different types of mitzvot, all different types of commandments. It's not a secret how to become a holy person. The way you become a holy person is you follow the instructions of the Torah. It's so interesting. Some of the mitzvot in this week's parsha have been discussed at earlier places in the Chumash, and the Sforno has to explain what additional nuances come out of this week's parsha. Uh, some of the mitzvot have not been described at all yet in the Torah. But the point is, all these different types of mitzvot, some of them are mitzvot that are from the Ten Commandments. All of these different types of mitzvot are all steps and paths to reaching true Kedusha. And I think it's a very worthwhile thing to think about in these days. One of the most painful questions which I've been asked with some, with some significant frequency over the past weeks is when a person sees a family yurt site coming up on the calendar and a person is trying to figure out how in the world they're supposed to mark the yurt site this year, 
It's not only for people who have your sites to observe, it's, it's for anyone who's in mourning. It's such a standard way to, in, in Jewish practice, to, to honor the memory of a loved one who has passed, to say Kaddish, want to say Kaddish themselves, want to ask someone else to say Kaddish on their behalf, but to say Kaddish, we don't have Kaddish anymore. Not for now. So what's a person to do? So I give whatever answers I give. Hopefully they're meaningful for people. But to think about this very basic idea. HaKadosh Baruch Hu created each and every one of us. What did HaKadosh Baruch Hu want when he created each and every one of us? And the basic message is the same as when he created Adam and Chava. Let me create a being that's in my likeness, who has the capacity to emulate me. And as we say in this parsha, according to this forno, to become a person of sanctity. Every single mitzvah that we do, certainly mitzvahs that we improve at, certainly mitzvahs that we become more diligent at, particularly during this time, but at any time, Every single mitzvah that we do brings us closer to being people of Kedusha, people of sanctity, and brings who we are closer to the ultimate goal that God wanted for us, to truly emulate Him. Could there be a greater nachas ruach, a greater pleasure for the neshama of someone who we were close to, who no longer is of this world, to look down from heaven or to be informed in some way in heaven that their loved one is, is better and better going along the path that God laid out for all of mankind. It could be that we treat people better. Kibbut Ava'im is the first mitzvah. Honoring one's parents is the first mitzvah after the directive of Kedoshim to you. And there are numerous other interpersonal mitzvahs in this week's Parsha. It could be we make Shabbos more meaningful for ourselves. It could be so many different things. But if in some way we live a more godlike life, if in some way we live a greater life of sanctity, that's the greatest gift we could give a loved one. What a pleasure for them. What a merit for their soul. So God willing, soon we'll get back to saying, to having the opportunity to say Kaddish in the memory of loved ones, but there's other ways to honor a loved one's memory. And just to share another thought along those lines, one of the many, many mitzvahs in this week's parsha is Hocheach Tochiach Esamisecha. That if we see another member of the Jewish people doing something wrong, we have a mitzvah to rebuke them, to teach them that it's wrong and to hopefully inspire them to do better next time. Why is there an instruction to rebuke? You could say different things. There's a very famous idea, I'm sure many of you have heard this before, that the instruction to give rebuke is juxtaposed to the instruction to not hate our brother in our hearts. And that many, many times someone might have wronged me and I develop a sense of enmity towards them for what they did. And the directive is don't hate them. Don't develop hatred towards them for what they've done. Tell them what they did. And if you share your, your, your displeasure with them, it could very well be that once you have the opportunity to talk about it, you'll feel better and you won't hate them anymore for it. That's one possibility. Another possibility is God deputizes us. God wants every Jew to fulfill the mitzvahs appropriately. And therefore, God asks us, do me a favor. If you see another Jew doing something inappropriate, tell them. Hopefully, they'll, they'll perform my mitzvahs appropriately. And I as the commander of these mitzvos, as the instructor of these mitzvos, will so much appreciate your inspiring a person to do better. That's also a possibility. But Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky says that he doesn't think either one of those is the real idea behind rebuke. And he suggests that the real idea behind rebuke is chesed, is kindness. Says Rabbi Kamenetsky, if I see someone that I know, and it requires a lot of thought how to rebuke a person, and it's not to be done on the fly, and Many times it requires some real reflection as to the person's character and personality and your relationship with the person. And many times it requires some good advice from someone else as to how to give rebuke. But if I see a person who I know doing something wrong, the greatest kindness I can do for them is to inspire them to do better. Because the greatest thing we can do in this world is to grow and one of the greatest tragedies in this world 
is if we don't take the opportunity to grow, and heaven forbid if we sin. So Rav Kamenetsky explains that that's why this mitzvah of giving rebuke is embedded among so many other interpersonal mitzvahs. Look it up for yourselves later. It's right there in the middle of so many things. Don't hate your brother in their heart. Don't, don't take revenge. Don't bear grudges. Love your fellow like you love yourself. All these different things Rav Kamenetsky says because this is the greatest kindness I can do for a person. So that's an interesting perspective if I'm considering rebuking another person. It's definitely a worthwhile perspective to think about. But something else, it's an interesting perspective for myself when I consider mitzvos, when I consider doing good things, and heaven forbid when I'm wrestling with whether or not to commit a sin. The greatest thing I can do, the greatest thing I can do, the greatest fulfillment of my purpose in this world is just doing another mitzvah. One more idea. There's a very interesting pasuk in Malachim Aleph. Uh, just to set the context, David Amalek is near the end of his life. King David is near the end of his life. And his son, Adoniyahu, of his own initiative, is uh, taking the reins of kingdom. And Bathsheba, the wife of David, the mother of Shlomo Amalek, comes into David and she says, my understanding was that Shlomo was supposed to succeed you. And that, of course, was David's plan. And she conveys to him how concerned she is that what will happen, what will happen to she and Shlomo, what will happen to her and Shlomo if Adonio takes the reins of monarchy. And she says in Perak Aleph, Pasuk Chaf Aleph, And it will be when my master the king lays with his fathers when he leaves this world. And I and my son Shlomo will be sinners. What does it mean we'll be sinners? What did they do wrong? So Mepharshim say various ideas. One idea is that in the eyes of Adoniyahu, the sitting king will be uh, usurpers, will be potential usurpers, so he will look at us as sinners. Maybe it means we'll be punished. Someone who commits a sin in this world gets punished by God. Maybe he will punish us. Maybe Adoniyahu will punish us. But I want to tell you how Rashi explains the word chato'im, that will be found to be Sinners. Rashi says it doesn't mean sinners. It means chaserim will be lacking. We will have been held back from greatness. One of the classic words for sin is chet. Isn't that an interesting way to think about what it means when we've done something wrong, when we've sinned to God? Yes, yes, there's the possibility of our being punished, and that's never an exciting thing to think about. But according to Rashi's Pshat, in the word Chatoim, one could say that the meaning when we sin is we're chaser. We've missed out. Every moment in this world is, is a moment of endless possibility if that we take the opportunity by, take it firmly in our hands and do the right thing and do a mitzvah. And heaven forbid, if we sin instead, yes, there's reward and punishment in this world, and yes, it surely behooves us to do tshuva, to repent, so we don't get punished, and we only get good things from God. But maybe even more than that, we've missed out. We've missed an opportunity. So, so many times we ask ourselves, how can we find greater meaning in this world? How can we feel a greater sense of spirituality in this world? It's not a mystery, my friends. According to this forno, the directive in this week's parsha of being people of sanctity is keep the mitzvos. Thank God we perform so many mitzvos so, so well. But we all have something. We all have something that we don't do at all, or maybe, heaven forbid, a sin that we are doing, or maybe just we can perform a mitzvah with more meaning, with more preparation, with more diligence to the halacha. There's so many things we could do. With God's help, we should all become just a little bit better and become a little bit holier and slowly but surely in our own ways become that much closer to emulating God himself in this world. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to these thoughts. Have a wonderful Shabbos.